the subject of today is actually going to be only part of this document about uh, making the most of the Mountbatten um, because the very first part is really intended for teacher aides and parents who have no knowledge of Braille. So mm -hmm. I have quite a long preamble here um, which I'll just um, scroll down. Uh, so here I just talk about you know the, the theme is early literacy and the target audience. But more generally, how can we actually support children, and uh, we being parents, teachers, teachers' aides, um, at home and in the classroom, but in a timely sort of way without expert assistance? And what I was hoping to do was to look at um, the whole issue of some of the formatting of simple documents. So I'm going to take you straight to this here. So this is the um, this is the situation, and I'm sure you found the same thing. We don't have Duxbury, okay? We're just in a little school in about three and a half hours drive from Brisbane, with very little teacher support. The parent doesn't know Braille, the teacher doesn't know Braille, and yet they want to be able to take the uh, simple word file that all the other kids are using and convert it to Braille on the mount pattern. So. We don't have any Braille translator except for what's in the mountain pattern itself. And these are the sorts of uh, steps that, uh, that I would be uh, taking here. I also have to mention that you know this will only work with one that has Braille translation built in. Um, and we're going to be using WordPad simply because that's available on all computers. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it. So we have to open the original document in WordPad, and here's one I prepared earlier. And we need to save that document. So the process is, and that's just described in the in the document, is you have to save the um, save it as a plain text document. And give it a name, of course. What shall we call it? Lion. And we'll save it to the desktop. Is that all coming up okay? Yeah, no, it's fine. Perfect. And then it comes up with a message you're about to save in text only, and it will lose formatting. Well, that's okay. Right, so that's the first bit. Scooping through here. We now need to connect a QWERTY keyboard to the mount button because we need to issue some formatting commands. Now, now, now um, this is just to show you, can you see that okay, the, um, the keyboard? This is a regular QWERTY keyboard. Yep. But I need to show people that it needs to have a PS2 type connector, yeah, um, okay. which is the, uh, well now it's an old fashioned one, though it's smaller than the very old old one. So, and that connects in, that connects in, this is the back of the mount pattern on the, the back right hand side. There's, it's the the closest port on the back left hand, uh, the back right hand side. Got to make sure you get the pins lined up right. And there is a little, uh, there is a little um, lug on the inside of the PS2 connector, and a little raised, little raised um, notch on the uh, on the top surface of the PS2 connector. And I just push that in. And now I should, with my QWERTY keyboard, be able to type on the mount button. So I'll just try that now. Um, 
All right, so I'll just try that now. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a just look at some of the commands we can issue. And uh, with the with the uh, the keyboard here, I need to point out that uh, we use the escape key. Oh, I better bring it into view so they can see that. The escape key here. Here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yep. Followed by letters, FE for example, and then the end key. Now, the end key is not the enter key. The end key is part of the group of six here, yep. which go home, insert, delete, mm -hmm. end, page yep. down, page up, page down. It may be laid out slightly differently, but anyway, it's this one here, end. That's the way we issue commands to the mount button. Now, the reason we're using the QWERTY keyboard is just that a lot of non-Braille specialists will um, be more familiar with a QWERTY keyboard than doing the same thing on the mount button, where we'd go command something in Braille and enter or end with this key here. So we're going to actually issue the uh, the forward enable forward translation enable command, which is FE. So I'll just do that now. Command. And it says command, and then I type FE, FE. and then end. On. And it says on, which means that text coming from a computer or from a keyboard will be translated when it actually gets to the, the uh, embossing at this end. Yep. Well, let's give it a test. So I'm going to type the word start. Sorry. Um, anyway, at this point, I just to show that this is actually has produced grade two S T A R T on the uh, on the Braille here, which means that though I typed it out S T A R T on the keyboard, it has actually put the contractions, the grade two contractions at this end here. So we know that that command has gone through. I just need to issue a couple of other commands. I know that uh, it's set to grade two at the moment because it's uh, it's actually been embossing in grade two. If it hadn't been, I'd have had to type the command F G R two and then end. The other two commands we've got to look at are the flit command and the fsh command. Okay, so the the purpose of, of the flit is to, uh, which lit stands for literal, uh, is basically to force it to respect the layout of the original, uh, so that you get some some semblance of the tabular structure. Um, we then also have the fsh command, which uh, is a shrink command. Uh, which will remove extra spaces and so on. But we need to turn it off, not on, because we, we don't want to, to stuff up uh, the, the structure by removing spaces. So let's try that. Escape. So flit is on, and I'm going to do FSH. And it is now off. All right. Okay. So the uh, the next step is to uh, to run mbcom. Um, so I'm going to now switch over to the to the mbcom program. Now that I've done the the work on here, I'm going to just push my webcam down, and we're going to find a mbcom on here. Now I've already got a session running, so I'm going to click on that. Actually, what I'd like to do is actually just take people through the process of connection and so on. Um, so I would at this stage just show how it's USB connected, but the important thing is after you've run MBCOM, switched on the mount button, is to connect it like this device, connect mount button, make sure it's got a mount button USB port showing. OK. It then prompts, uh, you've got the paper on, you switched on, have had a yep. cup of coffee, yes, so we continue. <laughs> yep. 
and Mountbatten should be making all sorts of R2-D2 sounds. And I can't tell you how nice it is to hear those sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I do it over the phone. You've got this connected, and then you hear this, and you go, oh, look, that's it. That's the ones. And now we've got our two green lights. The embosser is on, and it is connected. And uh, for anybody that's had um, problems with USB drivers, then that's a very nice... <laughs> That's it. A nice communication going on here. All right. So with the uh, with the um, MBCom running now, we can now actually uh, transmit the file that we had in our WordPad document uh, to the uh, to the mount button. And what we're going to be doing is using the uh, the send text file to mount button. Now there is a reason we're going to do it in this order. There, in the uh, transmission, there are two options. There is the send text file to Mountbatten and emboss file on Mountbatten. Um, we we need to do a two-part process here. We need to send the file to the Mountbatten so that it can be translated. Then we need to um, uh, receive that back again make some layout adjustments and then emboss it. So we're just going to do that bit now. So I'm just going to go back to mbcom, file, send text file to Mount Batten, look at my desktop, and there it is, Lion, open, And it's prompting me here, well, it's the file that you want to transmit is lion.txt, and that's correct. Did you, did you see that little um, status um, indicator come up? Yeah, it, it did appear briefly, but it was briefly. there. Good, good, okay. So, um, I do make a point here that... Um, you um, you may need to use the old DOS eight character uh, file name um, convention. Yeah, no, yeah, no spaces. Yeah. So in the in my document, I was talking about a file that had been uh, with a much longer file name here, which uh, mm -hmm. simply wouldn't work on the Mountbatten unit. You really do need eight characters with no spaces. I think it's a little longer on the ALS, but. Uh, but on the older mount patterns, you, you definitely need just a simple DOS type file names. Okay, so we've done the transmission, and um, now we're going to use the uh, the MBCom display to have a have a look at that. So. And the name of the file is Lion, so we'll display that. There we go. So it um, it has been translated. We can see that because of all these symbols in here. It's a little bit all over the place, which is to be expected because um, we we're not using Duxbury, we're not using Monty or or Megadots, and so. The, the Mountbatten translator is, is, is uh, very rudimentary when it comes to layout. So, as I say here, don't panic. This is what it looks like or should look like. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what you're seeing, of course, is the, uh, is the grade 2 Braille. Now we need to save that display so that we can do some layout work on it in WordPad. File, save display to file, uh, desktop. We can overwrite the original, I guess. Oh, we, might, we might call it line BRL, line BRL. Okay, and we, I think I mentioned here that there is an imp Important next step: We need to disconnect the mount button um, before we can um, 
and proceed. So I'm just going to do that now. Disconnect. Okay. All right. So we need to open that file in WordPad. So I'll just go back to WordPad. I'll open desktop line BRL. And this is it here laid out almost right. But what we're going to do is we can see this is an animal, a lion. These are commas, of course, are the capital signs. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to tab that over using the tab key. Oops, too much. Actually, I think, if I remember right, we need to... Yes, use the spacebar, not the tab key. Otherwise, it will get a little confused, confused on the layout. Oops, put the comma back in. Space that over. Take those extraneous out. Put that there. Yeah, that's all space, 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 space. Okay, that's all good. And now we'll just save that as itself. We might use the same name. Okay. Now, the very important last step. We need to turn off the Mountbatten translation Otherwise, it's going to double translate. It's already been translated, and if we have translation on, it's going to see any of those characters and translate them in, uh, a, a second time. So we need to go back to the mount button and uh, through the keyboard, issue the FE command again. So I'll just do that now. Come on. And it says off. OK, so we're ready to go. We'll go back to MBCOM, connect the mount button. And hope for the green lights. One green light, two green light. OK. So now that all that's settled down, we can now emboss the file on the mount button. So let's give that a go. File, emboss file on Mount Batten. It's on the desktop, and it was called lionbraille.txt. <laughs> while it's doing that, I will bring up my webcam. If I can find my webcam. Okay. Okay, so let's see if we can angle the light. Now what I might actually do here, uh, Trevor, is I might say use a blue chalk or something like that just so that uh, people can see the... Perhaps if I yeah, you see it a can't see the dots, no. Oh, are you hang on. Yeah, there you can, start, you can see that there's yes, on it. I'm using, using a shadow there. So yeah. now I think you can see that it's lined up... Uh, that's the, fine, uh, yeah. That's up the, the columns pretty well there. Yep. 